All right, this is going to be a lesson on back to the basics. We're going to get back to like chromatic exercises, different things you can do with that. We're going to talk about scales. We're going to talk about how to get major and minor scales up and down uh, one string as well as within the different positions. Talk about all the positions of minor pentatonics, positions of majors and minors. Talk about arpeggios, picking exercises, all kinds of things. So here we go. Start out with this chromatic exercise number one. So easy enough when you get up here, take it up one so you can keep going up the neck. And work on your down, up, down, up picking. Okay, so that'll keep you going for a while, going all the way up the neck with down, up, down, up picking on each string. And each time you get to the end of one, you go up one and come back that way. When you finish down here, you go up one. So it keeps moving up the neck. Now here's another thing we can do with this one, two, three, four. So we're starting out how we're doing it there. One, two, three, four. You can think about accenting on a different note, like how about accent on the two? So that would mean an up stroke on the one. And one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So my accent was always on the second note. And one, and two, three, and four, and one. So each time I hit the two, that's where my accent was, and that was also a downstroke, starting a new set of down, up, down, up. And two, and two, and two, and two. Now here we start with the upstroke again on the five. And two, and two. Let's come back here now. Let's, let's put the accent on the third note. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Now this starts with a down. So we got down, up, down, up, down. Three, 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 three. Now let's do it on the fourth one. So in order to have a down to start a new set, like a new measure would be, we have to start with the up on the one. So one, two, three, four. So that's ways of making that one, two, three, four thing have different accents for each finger. And that adjusts your picking a little bit. That gets you open to more phrasing, different types of phrasing. Getting used to playing accents within a scale type of a thing. So there's one more thing I like to do. I call this spider pig because it's crazy sound. It reminds me of that Simpsons thing with the pig on the ceiling. So anyway, this is going to be like one, two, three, four. So that's one on the big one and then down a string to the two. And back up and then back down. And you still do your down up, down up. So coming back, you got five, four, three, two. So take that one all the way up the neck too. Okay, let's move on to the major scale. So if we were looking at this big string, this E, a major scale is made from what they call whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That means it's a whole step, which is two frets, to get to the second note of a major scale. And there's going to be two whole steps in a row, then a half step. That's how we end up with these notes. Open, say if we're in the key of E, E to the two, to the four, to the five. So that was a whole step to get from open to two, and a whole step to get from two to four, and then a half step. So that was our whole, whole, half. Now we have whole, 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 and half. That gets you all the way to the octave. So that's how a major scale is built, is from a whole step, and a whole step, and a half step. And then from three more whole steps, and a half step. That's your major scale. So E, F sharp, and that would be called the two of that scale, the second note of that scale. So this is the one, the two, the three, that's a G sharp. The four is an A, the five is a B, the six is a C sharp, the seven is a D sharp, 
and the eight is the same as the one was, that's the octave, that's the E. Okay, so that's how you get a major scale up one string. Now if we wanted a minor scale, what you have to remember in a minor scale is the third note and the sixth and seventh. Those are the three that all get flatted in order to make a minor scale. So when we come up here, instead of going to the regular third note from a major scale, we flat that. So it ends up being open two and three. Now this next note is the same, your four. This next note, the five, is the same, but now the sixth note would have been on the ninth fret, it's gonna be on the eighth fret. And the seventh note would have been on the eleventh fret, it's gonna be on the tenth fret. So for a minor scale, you end up going open, two, three, five, seven, eight, ten, and twelve. Okay, so that's a minor scale. And that is a one, two, flat three, because this would have been regular three. So one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, and eight, which is the one. Okay, so E minor is E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, let's look at some positions here. Let's take the G major scale. Okay, so that's the first position of the G major scale. Three, five, two, three, five, two, four, five, two, four, five, three, five, two, three, five. And you want to finger each on its own area, each on its own fret. You could stop here because that's where the G is. But we do want to know that that, that note is also in the position. You could also include that note at the end on that end. But you want to remember what your root is. That's the G. Okay, so here's the second position. So we got five, seven, eight, and then five, seven, and then we shift over here four, five, seven twice. Then we shift back up five, seven, eight, five, seven, eight. It's helpful if you use the same fingers, like say if I use the first and third right there. See, I'm coming back down. If I use that same third and first, that gets me consistent going up and down. You can always kind of switch it up for depending on different phrases, but if you use the same fingers going up and down, you'll become more consistent with it. You won't, your fingers won't be like trying to make a decision in the last second, like is it me, is it you? Like. So here goes the third one. So that's seven, eight, ten, then seven, nine, ten twice, seven, nine, and then seven, eight, ten twice. Okay, let's go to the fourth one. So that's ten and twelve, nine, ten, twelve twice, nine, eleven, twelve. And then move this finger up to the 10 on the second string. 10, 12, 13, 10, 12. Fifth position. So 12, 14, 15 twice. Then 12, 14. And then you gotta move down when you get 11, 12, 14. And you move back up to get 12, 13, 15, 12, 14, 15. Okay, so that's the five positions of G major. So let's look at these exercises we can do. So that's, that's what's called thirds. You're gonna go from the first note and skip the second note of the scale, go to the third note. So it just moves right up the scale like that. Okay, so you can do that with all these different positions.
Okay, then we got the next one. So you can see how that works. Now another exercise that we have to try is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's going up in fours. And all of those are really good practice, so try that with all your positions too. Uh, let's look at arpeggios. We're going to look at three main types of arpeggios. So there's a major seven, and if we look back at our major scale, so yeah, that's the seventh note. So G major seven arpeggio is gonna go three and then two, five to the four. That's that major seven. So this is your one, three, five, seven. And then here's your one again, three, five, seven, and one. So now let's look at this next one. This would also be in the key of G. This is an A minor seven. Okay, so it's five and eight and then a seven. It's almost like pentatonic minor, but it doesn't have that note right there, that D note. So it's A to C, five to eight, and then seven. And the next string you got five, eight, and five. Then you got five, eight, five, eight. So each time where there would be a D note, you do not play that. Okay, so let's look at one over here. Let's say that here's a C major 7. So that was the same shape as we used down here in that G major 7. Now we get to the D in that key, this is a dominant 7. So I like to take that finger there. So we did the one, three, five, like from a major seven, but then we flatten the seven. Remember how the scale went? That's your normal seven. We flatted that like from a minor scale. So it's a mixture of a major scale and a minor scale. That's how you get that bluesy twangy sound. So we got 10 and then we got nine, 12, then we got 10, 12, and then we got 11. And then we got 10, 13, 10, 14. And you go down to the 8 and back. Major 7, uh, minor 7, and dominant 7. So let's talk about the chords in that key of G. So G, you could play a major 7 like this. So the first chord of that key, if you extended it to the 7, would be a G major 7. The next one is a A minor seven. And that G major seven was three. And then we kind of mute the A string. We got a four, four, three. You could also have your thumb up here and get that two on the bottom for a different ring to it. There's also an open one. You can do that. Muting the A string again, but I got three, open, 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 and two. But if you want a movable chord, there's a good G major seven. Now A minor seven. You play like that where you mute the A and you got this one finger getting three fives. That's like the jazz way. You could also do it like this, kind of a more of a rock way. So we have G major seven. That's the one chord. Minor seven is always a two chord. So that's A minor seven. B minor seven, the three, is always a minor seven also. If you're staying within a key like in that diatonics, they call that. Keeping everything within the notes of the scale. Now C major 7, be on the 8th fret, same as that one we did down here. And then the D is a dominant 7, 10, 12, 10, 11, 10, 10. The E minor 7 would be like those other minor 7s we're up on the 12th fret. Now the 7 chord is a minor 7 flat 5, that's like the crazy one. So that would be 9, 10, 9, and 10 on those middle 4 strings. And that would lead you back to like a G major 7. So in any key, the first chord is major, then minor, then minor, then major, then either major again or dominant, and then minor, and then minor seven flat five. They also call that half diminished. Back to your G major seven. 
Okay, let's look at the minor pentatonic blues scales. Of course, that's the most important one because you could take that and go into different keys just by taking that same pattern and put it in a different fret. So that's the A note. So that's the A blues scale now, or the A minor pentatonic blues scale. Now, if I came up here to a C and I played that same pattern, now I have the C minor pentatonic blues scale. But there's an added component to this blues scale too, this flat fifth note. So 03012020203. Okay, so that's also a fun thing to add in there. things you can do with that note. But let's look at the other four positions of the minor pentatonic. So here's number two. So three, five, two, five, twice, two, four, three, five, twice. And here's third position. Five, seven, three times. Then we go back for four seven, back up five eight, five seven. One more time, five seven three times. And then back for four seven, back up for five eight, and then finish with five seven. Here's position four, we're gonna have seven ten twice, seven nine twice, and then you want that middle finger on that eight to keep you in position here. 7 10 twice, 7 9 twice, 8 10, 7 10. Last one has 10 and 12 twice, 9 and 12 twice, 10 and 12 twice. Okay, so those are very important positions to know. That gives you that whole grid for like a bluesy type scale. Now the way that you get the other scales for these two types of scales, if we went back to those major scales we were talking about, if we took that fifth position, the one that started like this, if we put that on a different note, we wanted a minor scale, say I wanted B minor, I would take that fifth position, put it on a B. Now I'm in B minor, so it's as easy as that, and they all link together just like they did, one through five. So if you get to number five, number one would have to connect to that, and then number two, and three, and so on. So if you're on number five here, you want to go down here, you got to go down to four and three and two. Okay, so, and with the pentatonics, if you took the second position and you put that in a new key, like say A, and I played that second pattern, now I'm in A major pentatonic as opposed to minor pentatonic. More of a happy blues than a dark blues. Okay, uh, I'm going to do one more thing here. I'm going to talk about um, easy ways to play a blues. And you can use these minor pentatonic scales. Say a scale like this, something nice and easy like that. So you can come up with your own melodies and stuff. We're going to use these easy chords. E7, which is 0, 2, 0, 1, 0, 0. So we can do that for like four beats. We're gonna come down to A7, which is like an A, but it's 202 instead of 222 there. So E7, A7, back to E7, back to A7. Now we're gonna go B7, and that's two on the fifth string, muting the big string. We don't wanna hear that one. Two, one, two, open, and two. That's B7. So we'll do that for four beats, back to A7. E7 and B7. Okay, so we have what's called the one chord, because we're in the key of E, so that's our main one, that's our first note. Then the four chord is our A, that's the fourth note of that scale. If you remember our E major scale, one, two, three, four, so the A is the fourth note. B is the fifth, so that's our five chord, we call that. So we have one chord, four chord, and five chord. That's the chords that happen the most in like blues type jams like this. So we're gonna have E, that's the one, down to the four, the A7, and we do that twice.
we're going to have our turnaround as we go to that 5 chord, the B7. This is the 5 chord to the 4, and then go back to the 1, we end on the 5. Okay, so why don't you guys use your pentatonic minor scale. You might start with this little open down here to get a phrase going like 3, 4. Something like that, you know, because that is the E note, so that would be a good one to start with. Your other E notes are the big one here, and this 2 right here on the 4th string. So you might start with that one too, like... Something like that. As long as you're not just going straight up and down the scale, you're improvising, you're playing the blues. So let's try that. You guys start jamming. Two, three, four. over again. And this is called the eight bar blues because there's eight measures before the pattern starts over again. All right, well I hope you all enjoyed that lesson and uh, back to the basics. So we will go back to the basics every now and again in between some of these funner, harder songs and everything. So thanks a lot for listening. I'm Damon Wood, and please like and subscribe for more, and we'll catch you later. Thanks.